today we're back on the sandbox series and we're just going to go through in a little aspect of the game. Uh, today we're going to be going through the block and how they interact with the player. So uh, in the last series what we did was throw it, the block immediately entered the infantry once you'd uh, mined it. But in my uh, new updated version what I've done is created a like different thing, it's obviously not working there. Um, I seem to remember it was slightly temperamental. Um, I'll try and show you, but the the block aspect definitely works. So we'll we'll go over that regardless of whether this does it. Apparently not. Uh, I think that was to do with the frost and culling. It's not quite um, implemented yet. But anyway, um, what happens is kind of like in Terraria, so you have the blocks and then when you mine a block, this kind of smaller object comes out um, and that's on the floor and then if you go near it, it automatically gets picked up. So the way we do this is we have a few separate variables. It's pretty simple, um, v-speed, vertical speed, grav, gravity, and suck is whether we're being transport it to the player. We're going to the step event, we'll start with the gravity because that's probably the most simple thing. So as soon as we mine a block the ob this object gets created. So if there's not a block underneath it and we're not sucking towards the player then we add to the v sp uh, vertical speed the gravity which means we're increasing at a constant rate towards the ground. And we're going faster and faster the further we get down. And then we use script I move, which is basically identical to script um, move, apart from we've just got rid of the horizontal collisions. And basically that's it for that. Um, it's pretty simple. Simple. All we're doing is moving up and down. Um, we're never moving up. We're always moving down. We're just always moving towards the, the ground, if we're not at the ground. Now this is a bit where it gets a little bit more interesting. So this is the player. So we're going to have to ignore a few bits because the weight system in your game won't be working. Um, but the most of it is exactly the same. So if the distance to the player is less than 150, and, and this is just to do with whether the user has open weight slots, so if they're not at maximum weight then, uh, for that block, then we'll uh, suck towards the player. Otherwise, we're not. So effectively, if we're within distance and we have space for the item then it moves towards us otherwise it doesn't it stays where it is and this is for the second bit so if the distance towards the player is less than 30 so if we're in the immediate radius and we have the weight for it which we should do if it's just done this but anyway um, then we're going to pick up the item and the way we do that is we're using our condenser blocks which was one I've been over in one of the past videos which had a big database and we use the um, code ID to object. Um, it's IDD to object. So this takes in, this is a relatively new one, it takes in the object name and returns the ID, specifically this object name. So object block dirt. That's pretty self explanatory. And then it destroys the instance. Otherwise, if we do not have the room and we are not within distance then nothing happens the block just stays exactly where it is and uh, that's that's kind of it now we've got the suck towards the player this it again is not that difficult um, whoops. all it's saying is if we are moving towards the player then and our well, the player's x coordinates is greater than our x coordinates then we need to increase our x coordinates to get close to this Otherwise, we need to decrease them, and the same with the Y. Um, if you change these variables, you'd move at different speeds. Um, if you change this to a bigger number than this, then you'd move faster uh, left and right than you would up. That's totally up to you. It's just the blocks. Um, you could probably make this a little bit nicer using the actual move functions and stuff, but for the time being, that was what worked. Um, you could also potentially port over the code we used for the pet into this because um, it is kind of the same thing when you think about it but anyway, um, we have then lots of different blocks all doing um, almost the same thing so I'm going to go over a little tip for how you can make this a little bit easier for you 
So because this code is totally automatic, um, if you look at it, there's never any hard-coded names into anything. Um, the only time when there is almost a name, it's object inst index, but that of course is specific to the object. So what we can do is we can just assign these as having the parent of object uh, block, which effectively just means that the code uh, from this block, so all of this and all three step events, is inherited into these um, objects. So instead of having to rewrite all this code and copy into here, all we've done is assigned it to, to the children. Um, and that makes it really easy to add new floor objects as well, because I can literally just go um, add another block now we've got all the blocks in, but let's say we added a new block, block furnace. All I do is pick a sprite, pretty simple, and then I just go parent, blocks, floor objects, object block dirt. There we go, which made a new object. And that will inherit the exact same code as this. And that's pretty simple uh, when you think about how that actually works and everything. Um, go into common stuff, just quickly. And we're going to the actual mining, which is here. Yeah. Uh, all we're doing when we actually mine the block is this is single block. Let's just take single block for the time being. Uh, you can see here instance create and slightly randomization through the ran x and ran y, which means that it's not always in the center, we're not ran y even because it doesn't matter, but the random x means that if we mine a long strip down, then there is a little variation between it, so it means that kind of that all um, fills up that whole gap with blocks. Um, yep, this is all kind of simple, this is just the grid coordinates, and then all this does is gets the object, and this can use the script twice, so it first of all gets the ID of it and then use the ID to get the object name um, and that's all it does is it creates that instance and that instance relates to whichever block we um, destroyed and that block gets kind of reincarnated as one of these uh, floor objects and then when you go near them you pick it up it's pretty simple when you think about it that way um, and all the code is actually kind of similar to everything else we've done but it just adds another aspect to the game which um, which can be quite effective. One thing course to note with this is it does cause uh, issues on slightly slower PCs um, in the fact that if you create too many of these objects at once um, you're obviously processing lots of stuff every step because as you, um, these have three step events and they're all processing that every single step. So if you have lots of these objects in at once it can in some cases cause lag um, and a way to get around this is to have regular checks so if you're on a you can have an option saying if you're on a slow PC to maybe check every two minutes and clear all the instances or another option is if there's over a certain threshold of instances to just start destroying them and that will keep the instance number to a manageable amount um, meaning that we'd never really have that much lag and for the most part the game would play smooth Anyway, that was my video on floor objects and how you can add them into your game. If you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, what do you guys want to do, and I'll talk to you in the next one.